XI3 power button here, and we got running lights. What's going on guys? I'm Tyler with Westbrook Supply. Today I want to show you a little something I'm going to try and do. We're going to try and hack this Motor Guide XI3 here and install a uh, set of running lights on it on the side of it. I got the idea from uh, Josh Carter with uh, One Objective. He had these little Osnium uh, LED modules mounted on the side of his kayak and I was like, I wonder if I could just mount them on the side of the XI3 and just put a switch on there and then you don't have to worry about carrying running lights with you. So. Um, They'll always be on the motor and you'll just have a simple little switch. You just click it on, click it off, and uh, you'll have running lights. So let's see how this works out. We'll give it a shot and see what we got. So in order to do this, I'm looking to have a drill, the set of ring terminals, some dielectric grease to cover back up any of the connections because that's what Motor Guide uses. You got your LED module over here, the Osnium. That one's going to be my green. And this one over here is going to be my red. Um, this is a switch. I have a link to that. That was I got off of Amazon from this company, uh, Apile or something. Anyhow, it comes with two switches. It was only like nine bucks. The LED modules were like ten or fifteen bucks or something like that. I got a one eighth drill bit for drilling the hole for the wires, and I got a seven sixteenths drill bit for drilling the hole for the switch to mount inside the uh, the motor guide unit itself. Um, dielectric grease got it from the auto parts store and the ring terminals also got from the auto the uh, auto parts store so let's get into it see what we got all right so first thing i'm going to do i'm going to pop these covers off on the side and uh check in clearances before i start punching holes in the side of this thing go ahead and lower the motor down to its to its position where you're you're running the motor that gives you a little more room to work you don't have to worry about the blades being in the way Kind of gives you more access to the front cover panel because I'm about to switch up here in the front and uh, I'll get you a better angle of that whenever I get to that. Um, make sure you put the right lights in the right location. You want your red light on your left side and your green light on the right side. Um, you don't want to mount them backwards and they're not really marked very well so you know make sure you got what you have in your hands. This one's I know is the red so I'm gonna mount it back here Probably close to where the, the end of the D is. Start about the beginning of the U on God. So, I'll get an eyeball where I want to put it, and I'm gonna use a uh, punch to punch a hole in it. That gives me a good center guide. Get my drill bit, that was a 1 8 drill bit again if you missed it earlier. got a side plate off as you can see um, just peel this tape actually I'll go ahead and fish the wire through fish through. We'll go ahead and uh, peel the tape and mount and get this one mounted. Just some cleaner up it on there and it'll clean out all the uh anything that might be on the side there that might keep this thing from sticking very well little tape line the light up best you can Press it down. 
pretty easy. And that'll just stay there for the time being. Looks a little funny, but you know. Alright. That side's just done. Let's go ahead and make the other side match it. We'll go ahead and pop that side off. Clean that spot off. The other double sided tape. Press that one down. Where it's pretty much even. I should get a good press on it. All right. So as you can see, that one mounted. Might be a little crooked, but it'll work. All right. Now each one of these has to go through the sidewall. See if I can show it to you. So each one has to come through somewhere along this gray piece. It's the lining all the way around. You might be able to see it. That gray piece right there. Has to go into this gray piece. Somewhere in here. Might be able to tuck it up underneath or somewhere, but um, both wires gotta run into here because your negative terminals in the back back here and the positives towards the front and we want to run straight to those terminals and then use the uh, negative side of the switch for the ground so we'll get into that here in a second all right so pull these wires out this thing just pops up and out of the way and you've got this is my new wire running in this is a receiver for your remote probably or an antenna we can just pull that up and lay it out there. So, as I said, this is the antenna. We're gonna move that out the way. And I'm gonna go ahead and move this module out the way just so I can get to everything easy and we'll put it back into place whenever we go back in here. All right, so I've drilled another hole to mount these wires through or to pass them through. Right now I'm just pulling enough slack that I got enough wire to do what I need to do in here. As you can see, that's going to be my positive and negative wires. Again, this is the, uh, let's see if I can point it out with a pointer. That's your positive terminal. It's covered in uh, dielectric grease and your negative terminal is actually a little further back here, right there. 
and see where that pin. So the positive is going to go here and your negative is going to go here. Probably be best to go ahead and wipe all the grease off that you can get off. According to the wiring instructions, we're going to mount this switch. It'll focus on it. There it is. Whoop, was. So we're going to mount this switch. You're going to mount, it's got uh, four wires that come off. The two blue lights run through the power on, power off on both sides. And then you got your red and black, which is going to be your uh, positive and negative, I guess. Um, we're going to run everything through the negative side for the switch. Um, you can wire this up so it's normally on, normally off, or normally on or normally off. We're going to go ahead and wire it up so the light is only on whenever the LEDs are on. And then uh, the LED will remain off whenever the LEDs are powered off. So we'll do that now. Uh, another thing I might want to do real quick before I mount that. Um, I'm running all over the place now. Go ahead and check and see where you want to uh, mount this at. I think my best spot's going to be to mount it where the uh, my best bet's going to be to mount it where the the switch is on the left side of the the uh, motherboard here. So get this one back in here. there for now go ahead and mark this for where I want to put the lights switch so I'm probably gonna mount it right here so I'm gonna go ahead and just punch me a little hole there make sure I got clearance on the back side everything's clear there so good to go and this is going to be a bigger hole, so you're going to want to make this like uh, give yourself a little room on the other side. It's about 7 16 hole. punched um, basically just took the little nut off of that we're going to go ahead and slide the wires through for this there's in there and boom there's our switch it's middle i am it looks that real no i just unplugged that little wire so I can get this tightened up on the back. Alright, there you go. So that's the switch. Mounted up here just below the motor guide thing. It's all clear here on the back. Um, you want to make sure all the grease that you've wiped off with your fingers, you go ahead and hit that up again with the uh, dielectric grease. It's uh, They're waterproofing, I believe, so, like I said. Any these connections that you bust apart, you want to make sure you cover it back up with this stuff. Because you don't want anything getting wet, especially in salt water. So. Anyhow. Alright. That's done. So, like I said earlier, this thing's covered in dielectric grease. I'm just going to take and use one of the little bags that the packages came in and I'm going to wipe up some of it and put it up or get rid of it. I use a Q-tip and just take off what I'm planning on using, you know. That's the And then you see off. Well. Yeah. Alright, now we gotta do some 
up close and personal wiring. Both the positives need to go to the uh, on side of the switch, which is going to be, it'll actually be the back side of the, the negative side of the switch, or the back side of the positive side of the switch, I'm sorry. So, I'm going to wire both these positives together. From the LEDs, I'm going to put both of those to the uh, blue and red wire from the switch. I'm going to go ahead and slide the uh, two wires that are together in here. And meet them both on the other side. Get them in there good so when I crimp it, they'll be uh, everything will mash together. Get crimp on them. Got a good connection, nothing's going to pull out. You hit it with that dielectric grease. I'm going to slide some heat shrink tubing over it. Pick that puppy up. All right, those two are together. So both the positives are going to the positive side of the switch with the blue wire. Then on the negative side, we got to run the negative wire from or the switch wire, which would be the negative wire. This is going to go to our negative here, along with both the negatives from the lights. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and use this ring terminal and I'll use this ring terminal and go to the negative on this side. Negative on the switch side it goes to the negative battery so we need to slide on our heat shrink slide this puppy on here crank this that one's done Put a little bit of I let your grease on there. Whoop. Coming in hot. Definitely don't need that much. Torch that. Turn it the other way. A good seal on that. That'll help with protecting it. So that one, both this and my negative wires from the LEDs go together. And those will go on that terminal. Last but not least, we have the positive side of the switch. Slide on our terminal or our heat shrink terminal on there. Button that up. I got a good seal on that. Put some of that goop on there for motor guy waterproofing. My little torch, heat that up. All right, so now we got to wire all this mess in here. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this negative terminal off.
and your negative is actually going to have the bottom leg of the switch and the two negatives from the device. So we got our two negatives from the, the lights right here and the negative from the switch right here. So we're just going to take that screw out, put that through there, put that through there, and we'll put it right back in. Line it all back up so you don't strip anything out. And make sure your wires are seated good. And pull that back down tight. And I'm going to put some more of the, still got my Q-tip full of dielectric grease I had on there earlier, so I'm going to go ahead and use that up first. Sure sure it. Sure sure it. Sure yeah. Yeah. Up. And the only thing we got left now is to plug the positive, which will be this other wire right here. And you're going to get covered in dielectric grease, so just know it's happening. Make sure everything's lined up. You don't want to cross thread anything. And tighten that back down. All right. Make sure I got a good shot of that. So the wires we added to it, I use a screwdriver. This is my blue wire right here going into the positive, which is this one. And your negative wire plus the negative wires from the LEDs. These two, two coming in right here are both going to the negative, which is this one. And we want to make sure everything's covered up with goop. Dielectric grease. All right, all that's covered. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure the back of my switch panel is covered good. And then I can start putting all this mess back in. So, make sure everything's gonna go back in the right without getting tangled up, beat up, whatever else, because you're adding a bunch of wire Not a bunch, but there's a good little bit. Make sure your wires are good. Tuck it away. Get your antenna, mount your antenna back over here. It goes below the switch here. And the antenna. And then I'm trying to slide this puppy back in here best I can. So once we get the actual cover back on, Everything slid back together. Get our screws, put our screws back in for the side plates. And that should be a wrap.
Make sure your wires are good. There's the light. Let's run over here to the switch. And then on the back side, got a light there. Everything's clean. On the inside, there's no, no wires exposed. We got the one little hole we drilled over here to run that light through. Other than that, everything's pretty, pretty good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my uh, boat and we'll wire it up and make sure everything's working, make sure it all lines up. All right, guys, I got the Sholey here in the garage. Um, we went ahead and set the XI3 on there. We're gonna see how everything works. I'm gonna go over my wiring setup real quick too because we didn't really get into that too much. Uh, Drew shared a video a couple weeks ago um, while we were at Pickwick, but I'm gonna go a little more in depth with how we got the XI3 wired up to the actual Sholey. So check this out. All right, XI3 is mounted here on top of the Sholey. That's our power wire, it runs into the hatch. I've just used the hatch with the uh, rod holders and just run my power wire right up there, I left it in this top compartment, stays out the way. You know, I usually throw like soft plastics or something in there. So uh, that's not in my way for anything. I barely, rarely use that hatch. Um, and it's no, no holes drilled. Like I said, it just sticks in here. They got the hole inside the hatch and that runs through the back all the way back here to the back hatch cover. The back hatch cover, I've just drilled a hole in that. I bought a separate hatch cover, so if I wanna run it where it's completely sealed off or whatever, or supposedly sealed off, um, you can just pop the other hatch cover on. Um, there's my other side of my plug. The Marinko 70 amp plugs, I believe. Heavy duty wires, big plug in. Um, got my battery inside the black pack. Um, with the Sholey, I really don't use a black pack for storing my rods. And I've just punched a hole through the side of the black pack. And my wire comes out the back. We take that. Plug it right into the, uh, to the outlet here. And hit the breaker. Close that back. Come up here. Got power to the motor. It'll find its satellites in a minute. This is a switch we put in for the lights. There's the lights on the side and green light. And the red light. And like I said, the light isn't very bright on the, the switch. You see it is, it's faint compared to that thing. That thing's pretty bright, that's nothing. Hit that, when that light's off, your lights are off. When your lights are on, that light lights up. And like I said, we got running lights for whenever we go. We don't have to carry any extra stuff. They're just mounted around the XI3. So, you know, like I use the XI3 on both the crew and the Sholey. So it's convenient for me to have the lights mounted on the actual motor. So when I swap to a different boat or whatever, it's on there. So anyhow, thanks for checking out my video. That's my Sholey. If you got any questions, be sure to hit me up in the comments and uh, I'll try and link all the stuff down in the description of the uh, video so that you can see what all I used. Um, stuff's relatively cheap. I think the lights are like 10 or 15 bucks for both lights. And then the switch, you get two switches for like 10 bucks and then, you know, the miscellaneous wire and stuff. I think the dielectric grease is actually the most expensive stuff. So anyhow, y'all check it out. Hit me up with any comments. Thanks.